I want to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful national park in Africa with bountiful animals and plants everywhere. Tourists would stream in and out of the park's gates every day. This park was the size of our state of Rhode Island. Everything was wonderful. In fact, a world-famous biologist, E.O. Wilson, called it the most biodiverse national park in the world. Then this happened. Poaching. The animals were killed for food and their pelts. The numbers decreased incredibly. When all of the herbivores were removed, the predators died out as well. An aerial survey was taken in 1994, and the numbers were devastating. There were only 100 elephants compared to more than 3,000. There were only 15 buffalo. There was a single wildebeest and a small handful of other antelope. Keep in mind that this park was the size of our state of Rhode Island. The best place for a tourist to stay in was an old, beaten up trailer with graffiti and broken appliances. This park showed no signs of ever becoming what it once was. You probably have never heard of Gorongosa National Park. Maybe you've read about the Serengeti, talked about Tanzania, but you haven't seen Gorongosa. Those parks that I just mentioned, they have something in common. They have the animals and plants that Gorongosa once had. Because of human actions, the ecosystem was wiped out. Luckily, philanthropist Greg Carr rose to action. He founded the Gorongosa Restoration Project, whose goal is to bring back the wildlife. The brightest minds have been called to help. They study the animals and how to help increase the populations. I actually had the opportunity to go with these biologists to put tracking collars on waterbuck, a type of large antelope. Here's a little clip of me in action. Just keep doing that. Yeah, that'll work. So as you can see, it's very educational. <laughs> I also went with the lion team to track two male lions, and I went to the amazing Wilson Lab, where thousands of insect specimens sat in drawers. I saw how dedicated these people are, and I hope to become one of them someday. Now, there's a total of at least 71,000 herbivores of 19 species. However, there are only 14 zebra, and very few of other rare antelope like eland. There are also very few lions, hippos, and other species of carnivore. Overall, Gorongosa has much more room for animals than there are. That's why I'm here. I'm here to tell you about how anyone and everyone can help with just a few clicks. While there are many biologists working in the field, there's a place where anyone can help Gorongosa. It doesn't cost any money, and I'm not asking for donations. Wildcam Gorongosa is a website where you can identify trail camera images that have been taken by photo trap cameras that have been placed all around the park. With all of the biologists busy, tens of thousands of photos need to be identified. Here are the steps to making an identification. First, you click on Get Started on the home page. Then you look at the image that pops up. Click on the animal that it looks like, then fill out the information fields. Finally, click Identify, then Done, then Next Image. Don't worry if you don't know what it is. They say that an educated guess is better than nothing. You can also make an account on that website and on Zooniverse.org where Wildchem was started. On Zooniverse, you can keep your favorite pictures and talk with other biologists and, and participants in case a crisis arises. Wildchem is extremely important to the wildlife of Gorongosa. The biologists need to know how many animals there are, if they're healthy, and how they behave. Your identifications will go straight to the database where biologists can see if there's something peculiar in the trends of the wildlife. If each person in this room did 1,000 identifications, we would be roughly one-fourth of the way there. If you don't want to do that many, then I suggest you tell your friends, because if 1,000 people made just 410 identifications, we would reach our goal. You'd be surprised how many identifications you can do once you get started. I've enjoyed it so much, I've done more than 3,000 identifications, and I'm proud to be considered the top identifier at Wildcam by the creator. I was I asked by the creator and a lion biologist to make a video about it at a conference where everyone associated with Gorongosa came together. You may see a rare lion or you may see an angry baboon. Who knows, perhaps you might see an injured animal which would later have more young of its own. No matter what, you are helping. 
So when you get home tonight, I want you to join me. Make a few identifications, help nature heal. Thank you.